Hello everyone. Now something I really like to do is to try out and test unique camera lenses and I have an interesting one here today. The Voigtlander 20mm f3.5 SL. This is a manual focus ultra wide angle pancake lens for full frame or APS-C digital SLR cameras. Neat. As someone who likes landscape photography I think that's a great idea. A very small, ultra-wide lens you can throw in your camera bag on a trip that won't weigh you down. It's a full-frame lens, available for Canon, Nikon and Pentax cameras, but you can use an adapter to fit it onto a mirrorless camera too, if you want. They're not so easy to find these days, and they're not cheap either, typically costing at least £400 or about US US dollars where you can find them. 20mm on a full frame camera has become one of my favourite focal lengths over the years. It's a dramatically wide angle which stretches your corners a little, but it's not too wide, making it not so hard to frame your background. If you're using an APS-C camera, you'll get the equivalent focal length of 30mm or so, which is a standard wide angle, also useful. The lens's maximum aperture of f3.5 is not very bright. It's not really designed for shooting in the dark or stopping action if you're shooting indoors. If you get close to your subject though, you can achieve some background separation. Let's start by taking a look at the lens itself. Its build quality is great. It's made of metal and weighs about 250 grams, so it's not light. That's also a result of the nine glass elements inside it, trying to correctly render a 20mm image. But it balances nicely on just about any camera. The lens is thin, of course, but a bit wider than you might expect, and it has a rubberized focus ring that turns extremely smoothly and precisely. While this lens does not have autofocus, its aperture is controlled electronically by the camera. There are electronics in the lens to give you focus confirmation through the viewfinder and to help the camera to expose correctly, although I found I needed to use my camera's exposure compensation to brighten the image all the time by about a stop. The filter thread size for this lens is 52mm and unfortunately it doesn't come with any kind of lens hood, but overall the build quality of it is pretty classy. So let's take a look now at image quality and find out whether the optics to properly correct such a wide angle image could really be fit into such a tiny lens. We'll start on my full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. In the middle of the image at f3.5 the lens is fantastically sharp, contrast is just good. Over in the corners though, image quality kind of falls apart quite badly. Stop down to f5.6 for more clarity in those corners and at f8, image quality there is tolerable. Although we still see plenty of chromatic aberration and the very edges are still pretty soft. There's no real improvement at f11 or f16. So on a full frame camera, the lens is as sharp in the middle of your images as it is poor in the corners. In fairness though, it is usable enough if you stop down to darker apertures. Let's see how it performs on APS-C now, on my 24 megapixel Canon EOS M3. At f3.5, the good news is that the lens remains fantastically sharp and punchy in the middle of the image. In the corners, picture quality is far better than it was on full frame and chromatic aberration is now only moderate. So the lens's optical woes really are only on the full frame image corners. Stop down to f5.6 for a very nice improvement in image quality, but that's about as sharp as it gets. If you stop down too much, down to f16, you see some softness from diffraction. So the lens's performance is fairly good on APS-C, but a 20mm f3.5 lens hardly has as much appeal on APS-C as it does on full frame. You'll get quite similar results with your camera's kit lens. Well now, let's look at vignetting and distortion on a full frame camera, and it's not good news. Distortion is quite present, it starts as barrel distortion in the middle, but it's been overcorrected into pincushion distortion at the edges, giving you a wavy distortion pattern. It is bad, but you might not really notice it in everyday pictures, but you will notice the vignetting. At f3.5, those corners are dark. 
stop down to f5.6 and they brighten up considerably, but even at f8 you'll be getting some noticeable vignetting. Let's see now about close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to about 20 centimeters, which is useful. The great news is that close-up image quality remains really sharp, even at f3.5. How does the lens work against bright light? It's a bit of a mixed bag here. You will see gentle flaring, which occasionally flips into strong, bright artifacts, even if a bright light is just out of view. When it's just a gentle loss of contrast though, it's not too much of a problem. Finally, bokeh. It's not easy to get an out of focus background with this lens, but when you move close to your subject, those blurry backgrounds look fairly smooth, a little better than average for such a wide angle lens. Well then, overall, the Voigtlander 20mm f3.5 SL is definitely an interesting experiment, an ultra wide angle pancake lens, and it's also a good demonstration of why ultra wide angle lenses tend to be a bit bigger, because more optics than this are really needed to give good image quality in your corners. But still, if you stop it down to f8 or f11, then the pictures you get are quite usable, if you're willing to correct that chromatic aberration in editing. If you are a landscape photographer, you have a lot of money, you don't mind focusing manually, and you want the smallest ultra wide angle lens possible, if all that applies to you, then it'll be a really enjoyable lens for you to use.